God, we honor you. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for day 149. Thank you for watching over the night seasons. Thank you, Lord, for being throughout with us this far into this journey. Lord, be exalted, be magnified, be exalted, Abba Father, for there is none like you, Lord Jesus. I empty myself of myself, and I ask that you may fill me with your presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, you are worthy to be praised, worthy to be adored, worthy to be glorified, worthy, Lord Jesus. You are so worthy, you are so worthy, Lord. You are so worthy, you are so worthy. I worship you, Lord. There is none who can compare to you. I lavish my praise on you. I bring you all the glory. I bring you all the honor. I bring you all the adoration. Father, from the womb of the day, from the dawn of the morning, my Father, Reba Satanaza. Lord, be thou exalted above the earth. Be thou exalted above the earth, Lord Jesus. Be thou magnified. Be thou exalted, Jehovah God. Father, as John prayed in John 3.30, I decrease that you may increase and that, Lord, your name may be glorified. I thank you for everyone that has been following this journey of 150 days, Lord, today being day 139. Lord, look at your faithfulness. Look at your grace. Look at the power that you give your people. Father, look at your majesty, my Father. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Lord. I honor you. I exalt your name. I exalt your name. Be thou exalted, our Father, on day 139. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. I welcome you, beloved of the Lord. It's day 139. 39 by the grace of God it's the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living that we come to program and we come to proclaim even at this gate of time I bless the Lord for giving me this opportunity for me to be able to come into this particular day and to honor him with this wonderful wonderful time and this sacrifice so we bless the Lord for giving us this opportunity the word of the Lord says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you the night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed. He took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it. In remembrance of me for whenever you drink of this cup whatever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes father we thank you for the bread we thank you for the cup we thank you for your goodness and mercy Lord as you partake of this bread and partake of this cup your word is upon us my lord so we welcome you into this broadcast and that lord you will guide us into this time of prayer into this time of seeking you into this time of worshiping you the lord will get into intense your intense power even this wonderful day that you have made which is called today and the 139th day we honor you because we know you are faithful. We honor you because we know you are true. Take over this day. Take over this broadcast. In Jesus' name, we continue to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. In Christ alone, my hope is found. Let's partake of the bread together. He is my, my strength, my soul. Lift your hands. This cornerstone, the solid ground. from the NIV version. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle in the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will uphold, will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light will become the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is light is as light to you. 
For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Seventeen. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake. I am still with you. If only God would slay the wicked, away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139. We commence to pray. Verse 1 to 3. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I arise. You know me. When I sit and when I arise, you search me and you know me. My Father, my God, on Psalm 139, I present my spirit, soul, and body to you who knows me. I pray that God, according to your word, you who have searched me, you who know me, when I sit and when I arise, you who perceive my thoughts, you discern my going out and my lying down, you are familiar with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, you, are no, you, Lord, know it completely. Lord, this is such a wonderful knowledge. I continue to talk to you, Lord, in regard to this matter. And I pray that, Lord, you may arrange and organize every aspect of my life in conformity with your purposes. That, God, the wonderful knowledge that is upon me because, Lord, you have me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Now, my Father, lay your hand upon me as we are on day 139. Lay your hand upon me. Father, that the purposes you want me to achieve may be achieved with speed and finality. That there will be no delay in every category. Lord, you know me. You have me behind and before. Lord, there is nothing impossible with you, Jehovah. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit, Lord? Where can I flee from your presence? Lord, even if I were to go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. I rise on the wings of the dawn. I settle on the far side of the sea. Even there, your hand will guide me. Father, I pray now, guide me. For Lord, wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Jehovah, I submit myself. I submit myself to be guided of you. I submit my thoughts, my intellect. Father God, I submit this, my heart, into your hands, Father. For your word says on this day, 139, as we pray through Psalm 139, that Father, even if I fly to the other edge of the sea, there your hand will guide me. My right Father, your right hand will hold me fast. Father, as your word declares in Psalm 138, verse number 7, that you stretch out your arm against, you stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. Father, this your right hand, you will hold me fast. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that, Lord, your right hand, Lord, your right hand will hold me fast. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I press on. Yes, Lord, this is a spiritual gym of prayer that I come, Lord, on day 139, saying I'm imperfect, saying, Lord, I cannot make it without you, saying, Lord, I'm nothing without you because even, Lord, if I say the darkness will hide me, the light will become night around me. Even darkness will not be dark to you, Father. So no matter situation, condition, circumstance that is surrounding my condition, circumstance or situation, Father, everything is as day, even though it is at night. 
So Lord, I pray that you stretch your hand upon me and stretch your hand upon me in power. Stretch your hand upon me in power. Lord God, let your right hand sustain me and lead me and guide me. Let your hand, or stretch hand, stretch out over the anger of our foes, my Lord. In the name of Jesus, silence every foe. Silence every foe in the name of the Lord. Father, whatever the powers of darkness have invested between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m., whatever they have invested between 9 p.m. and midnight, whatever they have invested between midnight and 3 a.m., whatever they have invested between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., whatever they have invested between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m., between 9 a.m. and midday, between midday and 3 p.m., and between 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. of the day that bears the date 17th of December. Father God, we waste their sacrifices. We waste everything that they have planted. We waste their sacrifices, my Father. Everything they have said, every snare that has been planted in the way, Father God, we scatter it in the name of Jesus. Every sacrifice that has been lifted in a high place, Father, every encampment, every words that have been spoken to the sun, the moon, the stars, to the waters above, to the waters beneath, to the depths, to the darkness, to the farthest end of the sea, Father, in the darkness, you we see it as the light. So, Father, we pray. Every form of witchcraft that the enemy has programmed, it shall not come near us in the name of Jesus. The Lord, it shall not come near us in the name of Jesus. Father God, day 139 is a day that is a wonderful knowledge of you that you lay your hand upon us. Lord, it's a wonderful way of laying your hand upon us, Lord, as we pray through the psalm, gaining a heart of wisdom. Lord, if there is any shell around my heart that God is causing your word not to penetrate, let that shell crush in the name of Jesus. Be it pride, Father. Be it anxiety, my Lord. Be it fear, my Lord. Be it sickness or diseases, my Lord. I command it to scatter in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we worship you, our God. We worship you, our Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, our Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. I lift up my heart to you. I lift up my mind to you. I lift up my ideas to you. I lift up my skill to you. I empty myself of myself and ask you to fill me with yourself. Fill me with yourself. Fill me with you. 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 Fill me with yourself. Oh, Rabababa Sikrafia. Resa Katalabazaka. Proverbs 
Proverbs. We go into Proverbs. 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 Proverbs 16. Gaining of a heart of wisdom through praying through the Psalms. The word of the Lord, the undiluted word of God, is the only way that we can be able to grow our faith and to come out of anxious thoughts. Because as you see from Psalm 139, even though you make your bed in the depth, even there the Lord will be there. It says, for you created my innermost being. The innermost being is the character of God in every human being. And the human being that chooses to walk against the Lord, that human being is going to be walking away from the Lord. Because God created your innermost being. That that part that calls you Daniel, that part is not physical, it's a spiritual part. And that spiritual aspect, even when you are to gain the whole world, you lose your soul you would not be able to come into the presence of God. But if your innermost being, the innermost being, the one needs together in your mother's womb, that one is not something that you can explain how it happens. Because it's an innermost being that is placed in your mother's womb and then it's surrounded by a body. And the body grows in the mother's womb. And eventually a baby is born. And when the baby is born, that baby is a living soul. That baby has the innermost being of the Lord. And that baby has been knit together in the mother's womb. That baby is known by the Lord before that baby was even born. Life begins at conception. That is why it's not possible for people to call babies that are aborted a thing. You cannot call a baby that is aborted, the baby that is conceived, even if it's one day old. You cannot call it a thing. It is innermost being that has been knit together in the womb of the mother. And God says in verse 14, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. As a photographer, I can tell you the most beautiful and good-looking people are the ones with the, sometimes, not all of them, but sometimes are the ones with the lowest self-esteem. The ones that when you look at them generally, they look so beautiful, they look so handsome. But about themselves, the things that life throws to them, they end up feeling unworthy. They end up feeling like they do not look as good. They end up comparing themselves with others. And because of this, then they do not feel as beautiful as they should. Probably it's how you were brought up. Your parents did not acknowledge how beautiful you are. And you went out looking for somebody to tell you. Probably you grew up in a dysfunctional home and there was nobody to tell you that this one was actually you. This is how beautiful you are. This is how handsome you are. But I don't need nobody to tell me I am handsome or I am beautiful. Because the word of the Lord says in verse 14, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. This is wonderful knowledge. Welcome, Sister Lucy Gashomba. This is something that is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful knowledge. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. This is a place here, verse 15, that clearly also clearly shows us that life begins at conception. It does not begin when a baby is born. Life begins at conception. The life is conceived and that is a life. So the people who propagate abortions and all these things, judgment is waiting for you at the end of days. And those babies you are bought, all of them are living in heaven. They are living, all of them. None of them goes all of them are crossed over and they are taken into heaven. Verse 16 of Proverbs of Psalms 139. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Even the days you are living now, they were ordained. So the choices, the choices you make determine the side your ordination is going to go. If at all God has chosen Lucy, uh, uh, Lucy Gashomba to experience some difficulty 
allowed it to come because of what? There could be foundations that limit you. Probably the foundation of maybe your work with Jesus, that foundation, it was not as firm. Or maybe you have just come to know the Lord and you have life already. So it is time for you, Sister Celeste, that you begin to organize, yani, realign yourself. Realign yourself with the purposes of God. Because I strongly believe, especially if you come from Africa where I come from, and you come from Kenya where I come from, if you come from a tribe where I come from, if you come from a culture where I come from, you come from where, you need to first deal with those kind of things first before even you touch the things of God. But how beautiful it is when we know that Christ became a curse for us for it is written, cast is he who hung on a pole. Hallelujah. That I cannot need to, I don't need to know what my forefathers did. I don't need to feel like condemned or anything. Because the moment I have Jesus in my life, I have total deliverance from, from every cultural practice, from every cultural altar. But it's not just going to be automatic. You must contend and you must contend for your faith. That's why it's called a good fight of faith. It is a fight. You have to fight the good fight of faith. Many times in the obituaries, you see people writing a quote, and they say, rest well, rest in peace. You fought the good fight, what, 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 what? You finished the race. Whereas the man was a robber. Let me tell you something. It will not change because you write well of a robber. If the man was shot dead while he was killing people, the truth of the matter is that murderers and rapists and, and, and thieves and robbers, all of those will not see the kingdom of God. They will not. Unless they acknowledge Jesus as Lord and confess to their mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in their heart God raised him from the dead, they will be saved. But if at all a robber dies in their sin, they will definitely go into hell. Praise the Lord. That God, that God in his own capacity has allowed us into this knowledge that is so wonderful. Wonderful knowledge. That we have come to wonderful knowledge. Wonderful knowledge. Why? Because such knowledge is too wonderful. So too wonderful for me. Too wonderful. Too lofty for me to attain. Praise the Lord. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Hallelujah. If only God, if only God, if only God will slay the wicked away from me who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Praise the Lord. Verse 21. This prayer of Psalm 139 is something that I want you to come back to on your own time again. And just like I'm guiding you, you pray again through the scripture and see how God will lead you. Verse 21. Realign your heart with the purpose of God. It says, do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you. This is a condition of your innermost being, the place that was knit in the depths of the earth. That's the person. Let me tell you, this, this thing, this is body. This is the casing. It's the casing. The main thing is the spirit. And God trusts us so much that he allows us to live in a body, have a soul, and move around with spirit, which the spirit is eternal. It will never die. When your, spirit, when your soul dies, your spirit continues to live, either as eternal life or in eternal condemnation. Now is the time for you to choose where you want to spend eternity. This is all about this. Where do you want to spend eternity? 
You can win as much favor on the world as possible. You can do everything you want to do on the earth. But the moment that you do not have eternal life, the moment you don't have eternal life, then when you die, you will go into eternal condemnation. Proverbs chapter 16. Day 139, the Lord has enabled us to come this far into this journey. Proverbs chapter 16. To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. For the Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked, for a day of disaster. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. 6. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. Verse 9. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Hmm. The lips of a king speak as an oracle, and his mouth does not bestray justice. 11. Honest scales and balances belong to the Lord. All the weights in the bag are his making. Kings detest wrongdoing, for a throne is established through righteousness. 13. Kings take pleasure in honest lips. They value the one who speaks what is right. 14. A king's wrath is a messenger of death, but the wise will appease it. When a king's face brightens, it means life. His favor is like a rain cloud in spring. 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may share this video with your friends who are not aware that we are here on at this time. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver. Hallelujah. Proverbs 16, 16. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver. The highway of the upright avoids evil. Those who guard their ways preserve their lives. Pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. Verse 20 of Proverbs 16. Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. 21, 20, 16, 21. The wise in heart called, are called this earning. 
And gracious words promote instruction. Hallelujah. For you to be in this called discerning, you need a wise heart. Hmm. What a joy. Verse 22. Prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. The hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent, and their lips promote instruction. 24. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Verse 25. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. The appetite of laborers works for them. Their hunger drives them on. A scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. That's right. Verse 29, a violent person entices their neighbor and leads them down a path that is not good. Proverbs 16 verse 30, whoever winks with their eye is plotting perversity. Whoever passes their lips is bent on evil. 31, gray hair is a crown of splendor. It is attained in the way of righteousness. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. Felista, welcome. Now come into Ecclesiastes chapter 10. As dead flies give perfume a bad smell, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. The heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool to the left. As fools walk along the road, they lack sense and show everyone how stupid they are. If a ruler's anger rises against you, do not leave your post. Calmness can lay great offenses to rest. 5. There is an evil I have seen under the sun, the sort of error that arises from a ruler. Fools are put in many high positions, while the rich occupy the low ones. I have seen slaves on horseback, while princes go on foot like slaves. Verse 7 is something that you need to pray for yourself with a holy tenacity. You must come to a place of having so much fire in your belly that you cannot, yani, when you start to pray, you pray and pray. And then after you have prayed, you pray. And then after you pray, you pray again so that you will pray until you pray. And then after you have prayed, you pray. You pray to pray, then you pray, then you pray a prayer that will pray the prayer. You need to be in prayer until the prayer becomes you. That you need to be constantly in prayer. Constantly. That there is no specific time for prayer. All the time. 
the two con the conversation that you're having with people that are telling you oh, you know this you know this you know this you know this when you open your mouth to give counsel start with let us pray do not even add any of your words before even you start the counsel that you are bringing to them before even you say anything to them before you even attack your situation pray and say let us pray everything that you're doing before you commence just say those golden words let us pray and I'm telling you, the moment that you do that, you will make choices and decisions that glorify and honor God. As a single person, there is no way you will go to fornicate. When the man or the woman who is advancing at you, you will, they will talk their story. And then after you finish, you say, let us pray. The story will end immediately. Immediately, you will not go into sin. The moment that somebody is trying to bring a bribe on your desk and then when they come to you and they have come to you with a bribe and everything and they are ready to bring their bribe and everything and everything, you just say to them, let us pray. Instantly, that story of the bribing comes to an end. The moment that you find yourself angry, totally in anger, you are very, very upset. You want to respond to somebody who has done evil to you, somebody who has said something. I want you to tell yourself, let us pray. And you tell me if you are going to do those sinful things you wanted to do. It's not going to be possible. So the moment that you learn the magical word, the powerful word, the golden word, the tool that God has given us that will remove the slave from the horseback and put the princess on the horses the right way, you need to talk to God and tell Father, I pray that you will transform my thinking. I pray that you transform the way I think, the way I say, the way I believe. Lord, this looks difficult, but I pray. This looks hard, but I pray. This looks impossible, but I pray that you will come in my situation and you transform my situation in the name of the Lord before you say you are defeated I want you to say let us pray before you say you are sick I want us to say let us pray before you come to a place where you say that this is a difficult marriage I want you to tell your husband let us pray and you see what God is going to do wonderful knowledge wonderful knowledge the knowledge that is too wonderful, too lofty for me to attain is when the Lord lays his hand upon you. Hallelujah. It's wonderful knowledge. It's knowledge that you cannot in any way comprehend. It's too lofty. It's too lofty. And that's why I love Psalm 131 that says, My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. The moment you are there in a reconciliation meeting, and the people are there talking about, you know, this person did this and this and this. In the year 2005, this person, they did this, 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 this. They destroyed my shamba. Their goat came and chewed my, my leaves in the farm. <laughs> Before even you continue with those digging, 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 I want you to tell God, I come to you in prayer. I don't concern myself with weighty matters or things too wonderful for me. Let me tell you, beloved, this is a principle that you must get. Before you forgive somebody, you must come to Psalm 131 verse 1. You must come there and settle there and tell God, my heart is not proud, Lord. Start this statement in the presence of God because the heart is deceitful. The heart is desperately wicked, desperately, desperately wicked. The heart is desperately wicked.
make that wrong choice, I want you to say, let us pray. Because the moment you say, let us pray, God is going to give you victory. Welcome, my sister Afia. That before you actually utter those words that I will not be able to do it, I want you to say, let us pray. Even where you are, say, let us pray. Before you even think about that thing you're about to think, just say, let us pray. And then that moment, like again, I mentioned to you, singles, Stop going to church to look for husband or wife. They are not there. Don't look for them there. They don't, appear, they don't appear there. The Lord will cause you to meet them there, but they will not be there when you go to look for them there. That is for another day. Approach God in Psalm 131. My heart is not proud. Lord, my eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. This is a way in the approach of prayer that when we attach, we, we approach God like this, he cannot in any way, you know, disregard us. When you approach God like this, we tell him my heart is not proud, my eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. So if you have been going through marital problems with your husband, do not concern yourself with the great matters or the things that are too wonderful for you. Calm yourself. Quiet yourself like a wind child with its mother. Be in a place of peace. Play a place of peace, total peace and understanding and knowing that God is on your, on your side. God is watching. God is with you. God is with you in that matter. I have seen slaves on horseback while princes go on foot like slaves. Whoever digs a pit may fall into it. Whoever breaks a wall may be beaten by a snake. Whoever queries stones may be injured by them. Whoever splits logs may be endangered by them. If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed but skill will bring success. I want you to pray for yourself at this point and ask the Lord to fill you with skill for success. Because let me tell you, if God wants to help somebody, if God wants to help somebody, he gives them skills. Like if he wants to help you to deal with altars in your father's house, he will give you the skills. Because there are some of the things that we talk about physically, but now spiritually, but now there are physical ways of dealing with those altars. There are physical family satanic priests in your family. People that will continue with what the ancestors said must be done. Even if they are 50, even if it is 20, 200 years later, they are still doing what the ancestors used to do. Because of that particular place, and I know if you are from Africa and you're from Kenya, particularly you understand what I'm saying. There is a particular auntie or a particular uncle who always seems to know that there is somebody who seems to know, my sister Felista, how the Rendile used to name their children and how they do it and this is how the Rendile with the Rendile do even when we get married. This is what we do. Even when we become Christian, this is the far we go in Christianity. We just agree to a particular level of Christianity. We don't pass there. And the moment that I have gone to do my missions and I am talking to people, the moment I say, let us pray, I always hear somebody say, before we pray. Because why? They understand that prayer is final. The moment you say, let us pray, it's like you're saying, let us finish this matter. The moment you say, let us pray, Afia. If you enter into a house and the first thing you say, let us pray. You see, everybody calls to, is called to order on the spot. The moment you are in a circumstance and you say, let us pray, even if it is more, even if it's as difficult as how, the moment you utter those words, let us pray. There are moments where in this journey, I've been hit by discouragement. I've been hit by feeling, you know, like there's a time, especially when, uh, when I went and... Uh, destroyed some altar somewhere 
The next day, ay, 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 ay. the feeling that I was carrying, I felt like Elijah the day that he commanded fire to come upon the altar. The next day, Elijah was there saying, Oh Lord, I am the only one left. Eh? It is not a good easy place when you do that. And if as a minister you don't understand what, what is happening to you, you can easily even lose your faith. Uh -huh. You can. You can imagine the man Elijah. Elijah called down fire from heaven. Called down fire. Fire came and consumed the sacrifice. The fire was intense. And there was fire, there was water around the altar. There was water around the altar. But when Elijah prayed, oh, let it be known today. <laughs> he said, oh, God, arise. Fire your altar. In the name of Jesus. I love those prayers. Hey, I love those prayers. Oh, God, arise. Yani, unaomba, unasikia kabisa mungu wako hapa. Amekuja. Unasikia, amekuja. Fire came from heaven. Just a spark. Lord, we just need a spark. We just need a spark, Lord. Send a spark from heaven to ignite our fire in the name of Jesus. Send your spark upon my altar and cause this fire to burn upon my altar. Boom! In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Verse 11. If a snake bites before it is charmed, the charmer receives no fee. Ecclesiastes 10, 11. Ecclesiastes 10, 12. Words from the mouth of the wise are gracious, but fools are consumed by their own lips. At the beginning, their words are folly. At the end, they are wicked madness. And fools multiply words. You find yourself talking too much, multiplying words. Just hold your break. Because at that time, what God wants to do is supernatural and if you keep talking you will keep multiplying words and fools multiply words so you are not a fool so let your yes be yes and let your no be no welcome zimari let your yes be yes and your no be no god bless you ethiopia is watching let your yes be yes and your no be no so if you multiply words you are walking with fools. Don't multiply words. Listen to verse 15. 14. Actually starts, And fools multiply words. No one knows what is coming. Who can tell someone else what will happen after them? The toil of fools wearies them. They do not know the way to town. Fools are people without God. I told you this again. The fool says in his heart, There is no God. Psalm 14. Verse number one. And also Psalm 50, 53, is it? Let me see. Psalm 53 and also Psalm 14. These are two Psalms that we found that are similar in nature until a particular point. They are similar. If I told you, you did not note that, let me take you back there. Psalm 14, 1 and Psalm 53, 1 are similar. Psalm 53, 1 says, The fool says in his heart there is no God. They are corrupt and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. When you come to Psalm 14, it says exactly the same thing. The fool says in his heart there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. Psalm 53, Psalm 14 emphasize that fools claim there is no God. So the toil of fools, the toil of those who claim to know God, know God, they weary themselves out. They do not know the way to town. Verse 16. Woe to the land whose king was a servant and whose princes feast in the morning. Blessed is the land whose king is of noble birth and whose princes eat at a proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. This is something that I want to remind you, beloved of the Lord. Even as much as you go for your parties, 
in as much as this December you are going to visit people and you are going to eat together with them. Eat for strength and not for drunkenness. Don't just eat because you are saying it is, it is time for eating. You need to know that there is a blessing for the place where whose princes eat at a proper time. A proper time is the appropriate time when you're eating for strength and not for drunkenness. Watch what you're eating. This is also health. You need to check what you're eating, when you're eating, how you're eating, for what you're eating. Also, what you're eating, you need to be careful where you're eating because some of the foods that you may be eating are covenanted foods. You may be invited to a party where you don't know that they are celebrating the association of that brother of being enacted in a secret society. And the people you are seeing there, all of them are members of a secret society. And you go there innocently saying, praise the Lord, where you don't know that you are in the company of mockers. You are seated in the seat of the scornful. You need to pray and tell the Lord, Father, as I have received these five invites to go to these parties, show me which one I should go and which one I should go and eat with them. Because eating is an association. Let me tell you, beloved, eating connects and unites and binds people. That's why in every covenant that God made, there was a meal. I want you to understand this very well. And for those of you who don't know, this is something that you need to understand in its wonderful knowledge. That before you just go and eat with anybody, you need to ask yourself, why am I eating? Is it for strength or for drunkenness? You need to ask yourself this matter. There are particular places in this country, when you are traveling, even if you have just eaten dinner in your house, and you are traveling by that road, you reach that place and you say, ah, we have arrived at this place, let us eat meat. You ask yourself, why are we eating meat? We have just come from home. We have eaten food. We are full. But we are stopping here because people stop here for meat. And we stop there and we eat meat we did not need. Because we are just eating. Sometimes you don't know that there are water spirits assigned on that highway. That their job is to draw you into those businesses. So when you stop there, whether you like it or not, you are going to find yourself going to eat at 2 a.m. You are going in a bus the days that there was night travel. You are going with a bus and it's 1 a.m. and you are going to Mombasa. You reach a particular place and when you reach there, the driver comes out and goes and sits down and the drivers eat for free. Eat, drivers don't eat. Don't pay. Uh-uh. Drivers that are, are carrying the bus with people, they don't pay. Mm -mm. Drivers enter and eat for free. And those places where these things are done, they understand what they are doing. Because they are giving you that free meal, it's not a free meal. Oh Lord have mercy. It's like food that is sacrificed to idols. You do not understand that the food that you are just eating with these people, you are actually covenanting yourself with them. Especially for, for you who are in diaspora and then in Asia particularly. In Asia you need to be very careful about their foods and their ceremonies. Because some of their ceremonies are outrightly dedicated to idols. 100% dedicated to Buddha and his cows and all these things and his gold and all that. So before you pray, before you eat, use the golden word. Let us pray. And you can eat. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for this food. I dedicate it. I eat for strength and not for drunkenness. In the name of Jesus, may it nourish my body. May my body feel good. May I not have a stomachache or constipation. May this food be so blessed that when it gets into my body, the proteins will become muscle. Hey, some prayers you make in TV, people listen to you, they say, Ay, this person, what is he praying? You are praying prayers that when you are praying, you have understanding of what you are doing. Some of those meals, the time you are going to eat them, the people will tell you something like this. 
I tell you something like, Wey kula, tuliombea kwa kitchen. Just eat. We prayed for it in the kitchen. Just eat. Not so fast. Let us pray. Not so fast. Let us pray. Because even in a hotel, sometimes I've gone to a... <laughs> sometimes I've gone into a Kibanda hotel. Not even a good hotel. And, you know, the other people, you know, in a Kibanda is just the normal, ordinary kiosk where people are differently, they are eating different things. And my meal comes on the table and maybe I've gone there with a few friends. So before they touch, they say, let us pray. And, you know, the entire... Uh, Kibanda, people are different, you know, I, it doesn't matter. From where I'm sitting, I'm going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this meal. We cover it with the blood of Jesus. As we partake of it, refresh our bodies, strengthen our frame. In Jesus' name, we continue to pray. Amen. Because for me, I've stopped ending prayers. I continue to pray. Every time. I pray everywhere. I want to pray every time. I go to do my swim. I am praying in the swimming pool. I'm there. The Lord brings somebody. I baptize them in the name of Jesus. God has caused your life. It's possible to live a life that is continuously pleasing God and honoring God. That even when you meet that person that used to know you during the days of disobedience, that the second sentence that you are going to tell them once you meet them is, let us pray. Even if they are not going to receive the Lord Jesus, pray. Tell them, let us pray. Tell them, let us pray. When you go into a police station because of a crime that they have said you have committed and you are about to be convicted, just pray for them as well. Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Lord, for reminding me. I need to do something right after this broadcast. Through laziness, the rafters tug. Because of idle hands, the house leaks. A feast is made for laughter, wine makes life merry, and money is the answer for everything. The love of money is the source of all evil, but money is the answer for everything. And God created man and put within man capacity. Capacity to attract wealth and to build wealth and to make wealth. There are some people who effortlessly, they'll find themselves in a lot of wealth. But when you read Ecclesiastes, you discover that, that too much wealth without the ability to enjoy it will end up being empty and vanity. We all saw what happened to the man in Zimbabwe. The rich man from Zimbabwe died in his rich car, a Rolls Royce. In fact, the Rolls Royce company has registered very minimal accidents. But this one happened in a very, you know, and it's like, Crushed Kabisa and fire on it. Yani, ay, Satan has no free gift. The kind of things and the patterns that you see this man did in Zimbabwe, his grandfathers and all the people were living in abject poverty while the man was swimming in wealth. He was putting it on Instagram. Hey, look at me. Look at my life. It is good. It is beautiful. For popularity. Fame. Let me tell you something about it. God has exalted his solemn decree above his fame. That God, even God himself, exalts his word above his fame. Psalm 138. I want to show you these things because it's important you understand we are on a journey. That the Holy Spirit is giving us a PhD Psalms. Hey, Jesus. By the time we are finishing, there will be a category called Dr. Psalms. 
Because you cannot be reading the word of God like this and you do not even qualify out of it. There must be something in your spirit that comes that if the Lord is able to write in the tablets of your heart 150 chapters, do you think you're going to be the same Nemo? Do you think you're going to stand there, Celeste, and worry about tomorrow when you have 150 chapters in your heart hidden at least, at least? Psalm 138, verse number 2, it says, For you have exalted, you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. That God has so exalted the solemn decree, the decree of God. Hey, Jesus is Lord, my Father. I give you the glory and the honor and the power and the authority. That I know that you know that I know that the solemn decree of God is exalted in a manner that it surpasses his fame. So you, little human being, you want to, your fame to be about Lord of mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Even if you are to get two, 2 billion likes, 2 billion views, 200 billion viewers, 200 billion followers, even double the earth and give it to you as views, that would not in any way give you capacity to arise to the place that God wants you to arise. Money is an answer. And I thank God for answers. Because the things that we need, they need money. We need money to buy cement. We need money to buy tiles. We need money to buy roof. For one church somewhere that is building, we need money so that we can be able to pay up uh, a big uh, large of la per, per spot of land uh, for, for where, where our church in, lays in East Assembly. There, all these things need money. Money is the answer. So, you must be ready to be in a place to receive answers. Eh? You understand? You must position yourself, repositioning. Eh? You need a repositioning. Glory to God. You need to reposition your mindset. That your mindset is able to come to a final state. Hi, hey, Jesus. You will to come to a final state like this. That now, answers are filling the funnel and they are coming down and they are filling your vessel. Your vessel is getting filled because you are a funnel of blessing and answers to prayer. That God is able to release that which he has purposed concerning you into your hands. He is able to trust you with little, then he can give you more. Verse 20, as we conclude to Ecclesiastes and run to the book of Deuteronomy. It says, do not revile the king even in your thoughts or cast the rich in your bedroom. Because a bird in the sky may carry your words and a bird on the wing may report what you say. Deuteronomy 23. No one who has been 
emasculated by crushing or cutting may enter the assembly of the Lord. No one born or of, of a forbidden marriage, nor any of the descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord, not even in the tenth generation. Hmm. No Ammonite or Moabite or any of their descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord, not even in the tenth generation. You know, when I read about Moabites and Ammonites, I was asking God, these Moabites, eh? Why are they being born on a chukiawaivi? Kwanini? Why are you so angry about this? Ites. Moabites. Iomon. Ites. Who is here like me who, are, who was asking that question? Who was asking why does God say this about Ammonites and Moabites? Have you ever asked yourself why? Ammonites. Moabites. God is saying that they may not enter. None of the, no more Ammonite or Moabite or any of their descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord. Not even in the 10th generation. So you need to see this generation thing we are talking about. As for me, from now to my 10th generation, they shall enter the assembly of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, they shall enter the assembly of the Lord. They shall walk in the counsel and the might of God. Because this knowledge is wonderful for me. In Jesus' name. Ammonites and Moabites were the children born out of incest by Lot's daughters. That's why Ammon and Moab were born out of incest. You understand this? It's a detestable generation. Coming straight from Sodom and Gomorrah. The kind of mentality these children came with was from Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the thought of let's give our father wine. So that he may give us children. And you know the story about Sodom and Gomorrah. In the book of Luke 17 verse 32. It's a very short verse. That tells us this. Remember Lord's wife. You need to run quickly because of time. He says, No Ammonite or Moabite or any of the descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord, not even the ten generation. For they did not come to meet you with bread and water on your way when you came out to Egypt. They hired Balaam, son of Beor from Pitho in Aram Narahim, to pronounce a curse on you. However, the Lord your God will not listen to Balaam, but turned the curse into a blessing for you, because the Lord your God loves you. Hallelujah! May your curse be turned to a blessing. Why? Because the Lord loves you. Do not seek a treaty of friendship with them as long as you live. Do not despise an, do not despise an Edomite, for Edomites are related to you. Do not despise an Egyptian. Eh? Because you resided as foreigners in their land. The third generation of children born to them may end. When you are encamped against, when you are encamped. Thank you, Jesus. We are back. We give glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, that was very close. Data just ran out. Sure. <laughs> but we thank God that uh, we are able to get another bundle quickly. Uh -huh. We are on Deuteronomy. 23 verse number 9 when you are encamped against your enemies keep away from anything everything impure if one of your men is unclean because of an nocturnal emission he is to go outside the camp and stay there but as evening approaches he is to wash himself hallelujah welcome my brother ek over there god bless you he says but as evening approaches he is to wash himself and sunset he may return to the camp. Designate a place outside the camp where you can go and relieve yourself. As part of your equipment, have something to dig with. And when you relieve yourself, dig a hole and cover up your excrement. For the Lord your God moves about your camp to protect you and deliver your enemies to you. Your camp must be holy so that you will not see among you anything indecent 
and turn away from you. One of the attributes of God is holiness. And holiness is whole. He's three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. What makes him holy is his one. He's holy. And one thing that we love about him is that even in these laws we see in the, in the book of Deuteronomy, they still mirror in our New Testament time. We now don't go around digging around and doing the things here mentioned. But the camp is where you are now, where you're living, your assemblies, your churches, the places where you are. The things that you do and uncovering there, the excrement there, need to be covered. The Lord needs to walk in a clean camp. The present worship teams where sexual immorality is being tolerated because of a good soprano. That soprano akaya inje buwana. Hakuna mambo ya kweka soprano and then you're putting sin in the, in the altar. No. This must be spoken of clearly. That you, you'd rather have, uh, you'd rather not even have singers. Rather than maintain sinner, singers that are sinners. The reason why to sing and to sin is so easy and prevalent is because both carry the name sin. Singers, you just need to remove God in them and they will become sinners. Let me tell you, beloved, look at it. The name sin and the name sin, they have G. When you remove G, it becomes sin. If you remove God from a singer, he becomes a sinner. In the name of Jesus, I come to declare over you musicians. That God will give you capacity. There is honey. When you look at all the singers, that everything that is happening around the singers, you notice that sin is prevalent, just looking for them, waiting to devour them. You know, coming everywhere. Hey, all of a sudden they have changed their hair. Oh, yellow, green. See you what? They are putting things in their nose, their ears. Oh my God. What is happening to the singers? They have removed God and they become sinners. There is excrement in the camp. The excrement must be clean. The place must be clean. It must be holy. We must trust God to have holiness because without holiness we cannot see God. We cannot. We cannot please God. Day 139. Still being molded by God. Being crushed and pressed down and telling the Father, telling us, come here. Take it, removing this and removing that and, and the Lord chiseling this out, this pride and removing this. Because let me tell you, when you come before the Lord, and that's why many people are afraid to read the Bible. Because when you read the Bible, the Bible will convict you of sin. And then many of us want to still enjoy sin. They want to enjoy sin. They remove G. They remove God from the singer. To sing without God is to sin. That's from straight from the Holy Spirit. To sing without God is to sin. You need to understand this one. I'll say it again. To sing without God is to sin. Wipe off the excrement from the altars of the Lord. Remove the sinners and turn them into singers that have God. Because the moment you allow God in your situation, then you are allowing him and saying with the psalmist in Psalm 131, My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters. Or, hey, I love this scripture. I want to use this prayer every time, every day, whatever I am doing, whatever I am saying, I want to tell God, I don't concern myself with great matters. Politics, what, what, what are good things, but may they be influenced by God so that the politics of the day are not going to be about slander, about slandering the other opponent, about crushing them, tutawaona, tutawaangamiza, siju using witchcraft, all that thing that you are doing, let me tell you. My position is the one. My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. 
I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. As I have calmed and quieted myself like a wind child, like a wind child, I am content. I put my hope in the Lord both now and forever. Psalm 131. I want you to write it in the tablets of your heart that I do not, yani, believe God that you don't concern yourself with great matters. No. If you come to bring a message of reconciliation, don't dig what they did. Don't dig what this one said to this other one. Some of those things are hurtful. Some of those things are very hurtful. Like a case where a man slapped his grandmother. Not once, not twice. In fact, the third time he even chased the grandmother with a piece of firewood. He said, I will kill you. <laughs> now, how do you reconcile that matter? How do you even bring them together? First of all, the man is on a curse. Instant. Because of what he's done. Curse is there. So, first of all, in the wisdom of God, the person needs to be born again. That's the first thing. When they get born again, now, you don't concern yourself with the weighty matters or things too wonderful for you. Just present it before the Lord. He will take care. He will take care. He will take care. He will. He will. Verse 15 of Deuteronomy 23. If a slave has taken refuge with you and does not, do not hand them over to their master. Let them live among you where they like and in whatever town they choose. Don't oppress them. 17. No Israelite man or woman is to become a shrine prostitute. You must not bring the earnings. Now listen to this very well. You must not bring the earnings of a female prostitute or of a male prostitute into the house of the Lord to pay any vow because the Lord your God detests them both. There are some offerings the Lord is going to reject. Do not charge a fellow Israelite interest, whether on money or food or anything that may earn interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but not a fellow Israelite, so that the Lord your God may bless you in everything you put your hand to in the land you are entering to possess. 21. If you make a vow to the Lord your God, don't be slow to pay it. For the Lord your God will certainly demand it of you and you will be guilty of sin. Ecclesiastes 5 says, when you walk in the house of the Lord, walk slowly. Do not come and make a vow before the Lord. Then later, tell the temple messenger that I made a mistake. In fact, when people are pledging, I don't pledge. I purpose not to pledge. For me, it's my principle. I give. I do not pledge. Because the moment you pledge and then you are not able to redeem your pledge, what you are doing is actually causing the enemy to have an upper hand over you because if you say, I am going to support the next mission Monday, you are going on Malcolm David Silla. Don't be quick in saying those words. Please, don't. Because the moment you fail to do that, I will not demand it from you. The Lord himself will do that. You understand? So the things that God is saying here, when you make a vow to the Lord your God, and I thank God because he has done these covenants with people around the world, that at times the ministry of, uh, of people like Billy Graham, I don't remember a day when he was conducting a fans drive. I don't remember. I don't know if it was there. I've never seen. Our friend Benny Hinn, he repented and told the world that what he was doing was wrong. By telling people to give a thousand dollars so that God can bless them. We trusted in his big name and we did what we was, we saw what God was doing in, him, in his ministry. So we started to do and follow what he says. But in the end of it all, what, what was he doing? Out of the flesh. He was singing, he removed God, he became sinning. Then God forgives. God restores. We are not able to judge. But if you make a vow to the Lord your God, don't be slow to pay it. For the Lord your God will certainly demand of you and will be guilty of sin. But if you refrain, but if you refrain from making a vow, you will not be guilty. Whatever your lips utter, you must be sure to do. 
because you made your vow freely to the Lord your God with your own mouth. If you enter your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat all the grapes you want, but do not put any in, in, in your basket. If you enter your neighbor's grain field, you may pick kernels with your hands, but you must not put a sickle on their standing grain. Hmm, I love this scripture. Wonderful words. Very soon we are going to go to the Deuteronomy of Blessings. From 28, you will discover some amazing things about this God. Hallelujah. You can also read ahead. Today we have come to chapter 23. So we have been in 23 days of the book of Deuteronomy. You know, I noticed my Bible <laughs> in the middle here is, is where a lot of activities have been. And it's a new book, by the way. So we started also activating this other one. Because you can see this side here, the book of Psalms. <laughs> the book of Psalms has been a challenge, uh, you know, over there. So we come to the book of Luke. 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 Luke chapter what? We are on the book of Luke. Then shortly we shall be concluding as the Lord enables us. Luke 22, I believe it is. That is where we are coming into. Luke 22. So it says, Now the festival of the unleavened bread. Let me improve the lighting a little bit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now the festival of unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were are we on 22 or on 21? Let me check. No, no, we are on 21, not 22, sorry. Let me read Luke 21, it's 21. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper he also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins truly i tell you he said this poor widow has put in more than all the others all these people gave their gifts out of their wealth but she out of her poverty put in all she had to live on verse 5 some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, As for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Verse 7. But teacher, they asked, When will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to, to take place? He replied, Watch out that what you... Uh, watch out that... You are not deceived, for many will come in my name claiming, I am he, the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, nation will raise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines, pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison. You will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me, and but mark, make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give your, you words and wisdom 
and I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends. They will put some of you to death. Verse 17 of Luke 21 in the NIV. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair on your, of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. Hey, I love these verses like this. You know, this verse is just one line. Stand firm and you will win life. So when, I, when you meet your friend tomorrow, just greet them and tell them, stand firm, you will win in life. And you'll have given them Luke chapter 21 verse 19. Luke 17, 32. Remember Lord's wife. That's another memory verse. You must remember that one. Every time you go, whatever situation, condition, circumstance, remember Lord's wife. Huh. Listen to verse 20. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the city get out and let those in the country not enter the city. For this is the time of punishment in fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be a great distress in the land and wrath against these people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times the Gentiles are fulfilled. The times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Verse 25. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming to the world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Then these things will take place, will begin to take place. Stand, firm, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the, fig, and all the trees. When the sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you will know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Glory to God. Be careful of your hearts will be be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. Now, we are living in times when our hearts are being weighed down by carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day is closing on us suddenly like a trap. We need to come to the place where we say, Lord, my heart will not, my heart is not proud, Lord. My heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty, Lord. I don't concern myself with great matters. No things too wonderful for me. Remind yourself, when you see something bringing anxiety, remind yourself Psalm 131 verse 1. My heart is not proud, Lord. My heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty, nor do I concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. Start your sentences like that. Start your sentences with let us pray. When a problem is brought to you on your desk, tell the person, let us pray. The story will change. For the singles, now that you are being invited by this young man to go and visit him because the holidays are here, Start the sentence of your answer with, let us pray. Then you tell me your response. Pray about it. Tell God about it. Tell God, I know I feel lonely. Lord, my body sometimes 
is on fire. I feel the things of disobedience. Because if you are if you have just been born again, the way you used to live in sin, your body remembers. And it wants to take you that direction. Oh, winter is coming. Oh, I cannot stay alone in this house. I need to call sister so-and-so from church. Hey, brother, fire is coming. So make sure if you're inviting sister so-and-so, she comes with five other sisters and you have other ten brothers. Not five brothers, five sisters. That is inviting the devil into your assembly. All you need to do is allow God into your circumstances fully. That way you will not find yourself in ways of sin. Because if you start your sentences with let us pray, it is very almost next to impossible for you to go and continue sinning. It is winter. We all know. It is I. Eh, it is winter. COVID-19 has come and it has helped us on how we greet each other. Some of the brothers, especially I remember in a youth church, the youth church, the sisters and the brothers, the way they used to greet each other, you would actually notice the ones that are, are, are interested with each other, just how they greet each other. So this one would come and they would greet the chicks like this, greet the chicks. Then the one that you like, say, oh, brother, so and so, God has been good. Hey, shame on you. Hey, we see the sensuality in that one. Run away from sin. Turn away from sin. Turn away. Run away. Singers, introduce God in everything. Say before I sing this song, Jesus is not a boyfriend. Hey, my friends. You cannot sing a song and you want us to believe you are singing to a lover somewhere. The way you touch me. The way you romance me. Who? Hey, Lord Almighty. Who are you talking about? Are you talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? I love the way you romance me. Hey! Why are they going to Hey, Lord have mercy on us. Singers, singers, replace God in your songs. Put God in your sin and you will actually run away from song, sin. Put G for God in your singing and you will run away from sinning. This is the way. Write songs. Ask God to inspire you. But don't play for us songs that you want us to get into romance. Even play song that you will start fornication with a worship song. Oh, how can you say that's a worship song? How can you even say that is worship? You're putting candlelight, rose flowers, dark house. My God. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness and anxieties of life. On that day, we'll close on you suddenly like a trap for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. You see, we have been given a prayer point here that this prayer point it says be always on the watch. And pray. Be always on the watch and pray. This means that everything that you are doing every day, even today, you, as you're making that decision for that company, you will start by, Lord, I don't know what I must do, but I ask for your guidance. And right there, right there, God is going to start guiding you. Right in the middle of what you're doing, Lord, I don't know what to do in this matter. Help me. I've done that severally, and people ask me, are you talking to me? And before they discover what I am doing, I already have a solution from the Holy Spirit. Because it's something that you cannot remain ordinary when you are working with God closely. You can't remain ordinary. You will not be ordinary. Sometimes you say, just give me a minute, and just move two steps away from those people, and just stay, tell God, God, what must I do? What must I do now? Help me. Give me wisdom now. You are right on the scene. Right that difficult time. Right there. Say, Lord, what must I do? Immediately you open your eyes. The Holy Spirit will give you right there what you must do. 
and begin to do it. This last March Mission Monday, you know, we were with the team that uh, we were clearing up the ground uh, at, the, at the scripture garden. And as I mentioned to you, I still have some more bricks I need to take to Kahuro. And I thank God because he was going to provide the resource that I need for the transportation. Because it's an offering that we must do in completion. So as we were clearing the ground where the building was before and we were removing the bricks, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to take all these men for a meal here in the small shopping center. Let's go and eat beans and chapatis. As much as you can eat. <laughs> it was all you can eat. If I told somebody can eat two plates, go ahead. If I told you can eat five chapatis, go ahead. There was bottomless. So I didn't understand what the Holy Spirit was saying by this, but I said, okay, I will obey. So I went. We were about how many of us? We were about uh, nine of us. We walked in there. Before we walked in there, and this small town that I was going to, there used to be a huge Kamba shrine there. Big Kamba shrine. The town has refused to grow. It yani, looks deserted by 10 o'clock. It's only one hotel that is open, one shop that is open, and there is no other business. The only business that thrives there was alcohol business because no longer is it going to thrive. As long as the Lord reigns, it is not going to thrive anymore. No, in the name of Jesus. Hey. So we, we approached, we found two ladies seated in the pattern of slander and gossip. And looking at them, one of them was my maternal aunt sitting there on the rock. Together with her was a neighbor from me, from where I live. Because you know, it's totally in my neighborhood, Kabisa. So this lady that was, they were seated together, I started telling them, we have come that right now we may share a meal with these friends because we have come they have never been here i brought them for a meal so earlier i had passed by there and warned mary the owner of that uh, hotel who actually we prayed for her she got born again earlier in one of the mission mondays i told her that get ready because i'm coming to eat up all the food before lunch that's what i had told her so i told her put for these people as much food as they can eat so the people were, were put for uh, beans and, and chapati. And for me, I was talking to uh, my aunt and this neighbor. So as I was speaking, the word of knowledge came to me. And I, told, I looked at that uh, old widow. She's actually my neighbor. I said to her, there's something that has been disturbing you. And today, the Lord is going to deal with it. My auntie was quick. She said, we were just talking about it now. What you have just said, we are talking about it now. Before even we finish, the old grand, the, the old widow, she said to me, there is nothing to hide. Here it is. She put her hand inside her clothes and removed two tobacco. Uh, <laughs> she put, removed tobacco. We call it mbake in kikamba. She removed two of them. She removed them and said, here is my problem. I love God, everything, but this one, it has refused. It has refused to go. I said, now we must pray that you may receive the Lord. She said, okay, I have even received the Lord a long time. I said, it's no problem. Do you remember the day? She said, I don't remember the day. I said, can we make the day today? She said, sure. I don't have a problem. Let's pray. So we prayed for them. They, go, they received the Lord. And then I said to them, now the Lord has come to you. The altar that was here. Do you remember the altar that was here? I spoke to her because she understands. She understands what I'm asking. There was a shrine there. It's not something that we are guessing. It's not storybook. This is reality. There was a Kamba shrine where the, that shopping center is. The shopping center, they say that in the many years ago, used to pass there and hear children crying. Used to pass there and hear men crying. But there were no people. There was everlasting mist in that place. You hear all these stories and you say now, Lord, are these stories, and is this in my hometown? I thank God that you have given me capacity and understanding that I bring the word of God to these people and they will be set free. Beloved of the Lord, as I prayed for this, this my auntie and uh, this neighbor of mine, the Holy Spirit told me, do not throw away that tobacco. 
The moment you throw it on the ground, it will be the same as giving a libation to the, to the ancestors who used to be given tobacco as one of the offerings. We used to be given millet as one of the offerings. We used to be given traditional liquor as one of the offerings. Dear chief, dear government administrators, you will never finish illicit brew as long as you're going to pour it. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> as long as you are pouring illicit brew whenever you find it, without any necessarily prayer, you are actually giving the, the ancestral gods a huge libation drink. Big one. Una mwaka hapo hiyo pombe yote na kesho wanaenda wanatengeneza 200 liters and you have nothing you can do. Because this thing is spiritual. The illicit liquor business is not an ordinary business. It is a spiritual business bound in the tying of hearts of men. And that's why you will find rats and evil things thrown inside the liquor. You don't understand why a rat is inside liquor. You don't understand why there is an old socks that has been thrown inside the liquor. And people are drinking the liquor. They don't understand why they are drinking the liquor. They don't know why they are bound there. They don't know why they are sleeping there. They don't know why they are giving themselves there. There's one lady called uh, Sabina. I prayed for her. One time, I think a year ago, a year ago, yes, a year ago in February, this lady was totally drunk, completely drunk in Nairobi. We met with her when I was, I was in a time of prayer and fasting. And immediately when I met with her, I said to her, Jesus loves you. You are getting free. And I talked to her like I had been counseling her. I was there with my sister, uh, Ruth Wanja. We prayed for this lady. She revealed to us that that day she wanted to kill herself and kill her child. And yet she was pregnant. Oh, Jesus. That's what Satan does. She had given herself to a liquor house. She had been there that when the men come there, because she doesn't have anything to do and she doesn't have money, she just goes ahead, gives herself to the men so that she can get liquor. Can you imagine this kind of a situation? She didn't have a house. She has a child. And... She was pregnant and yet she doesn't know the father. She can't know the father. Because the number of times she has been with men, she can't even count who is who. And here's the big one. She's HIV positive. Hmm. Some of the things and scenarios God brings our way is to know that we must always be on watch and pray so that we may be able to to escape all that is about to happen. You must always be on watch and pray. That when I, next time I go on a mission and I meet a blind person, I will trust God and say, receive your sight in Jesus' name. I will trust God. I will trust God. He said, you will lay hands on the sick, they will get well. You will see the blind, they will see. The deaf will hear. If these things were done, it's not a, a, a precept for the few. It's for us all. Today, I thank God that that baby lived. And that baby was not breastfed. So that baby is possible that that baby will not be HIV positive. And this lady still continues to come to church. And this lady... Apart from the time of COVID-19 lockdown, it was difficult to reach these people because they don't have internet, they don't have connectivity, and church was closed. So God is also doing the work of restoration in his own way. Verse 37 of Luke 21 as we conclude. Each day, Jesus was teaching at the temple and each evening he went out to spend the night on a hill called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to hear him, to hear him at the temple. That is Luke 21. We bless the Lord and give him praise. We are beginning 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter number 1. What a joy. We have just gone through the letters just like that. You know, just like that. We've gone through Galatians. We've gone through Ephesians. We've gone through Colossians. We've gone through Philippians. We've gone through First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians. We've gone through First Timothy, Second Timothy. We've gone through Philemon. We have gone through Titus. We have gone through James, and now we are in First Peter. Look at how God is faithful. These are places that 
I can't I know that there are a lot of you who cannot remember a time that you have gone through the Bible the way you have gone through the Bible this year. And I thank God because he has enabled us. In the next season, we shall go through the prophets, shall go through Ezekiel, shall go through Jeremiah, we shall go through uh, Joel, we shall go through uh, Micah, we shall go through Haggai, we shall go through Malachi. And by the time season three will be done, we will be finished with the entire Bible. All of it will be done. And there will be videos that attest to what we are doing for the glory of God. For he has exalted his solemn decree above his fame, surpassing his fame, First Peter. So the word of God is supreme. The word of God is Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh. Glory to God. First Peter, God bless you, brother E.K., glory to God. He says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Eh? Sister Celeste, they have, mentioned Bith they have mentioned Asia for you. Verse 2, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with blood. Let's read it again. God bless you, Elias. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his, word, with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is, already, that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. 7. These have come so that, the proven, so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you don't see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Hallelujah. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hallelujah. The end result of your faith is the salvation of your souls. Verse 10. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you. When they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Verse 13. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Hallelujah. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, 
Be holy, for I am holy. Since, all, since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. <coughs> Verse 18. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you are redeemed from the empty way of life you handed uh, from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors but with the precious blood of Christ a lamp without blemish or defect he was chosen before the creation of the world but was revealed in these last times for your sake through him you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flower fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Isaiah 40 verse 6 to 8 gives us the same words. And this is the word that was preached to you. Hallelujah! 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 Father, our Lord, we thank you for the public reading of your word that we have committed to. We thank you for the six chapters of the day. We thank you, Lord, for gathering us here. We thank you, our Father, for giving us grace and capacity to be in your presence. Lord, I thank you for my friends and my relatives. I thank you, Lord, for my uh, colleagues. I thank you, Lord, even for my virtual friends and my Facebook friends and Instagrammers and all the people that are barely a series of zeros and ones in computer language. But Lord, we know that our spirits were innermost knit in you and you know us by name. Lord, there are these ones the singers that we have talked about that have removed God from their sin. And they have become walking in sin. Began walking in sin. Father, because of fame and popularity, others because of perishable things. Father, manifest your glory. Manifest your glory. Manifest your glory, Lord. Father, manifest your glory. Let your glory fall upon us. Lord, we pray over the activities of today. We pray for your counsel. We pray for your wisdom. We pray for your love. We wait on you, Lord. For you are a God who answers by fire. You are a God who is mighty and powerful. You 
In Isaiah 46, verse 3. <clears throat> the word of the Lord says, Listen to me, you descendants of Jacob, all the remnant of the people of Israel, you whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried you since you were born, even to your old age and gray hairs. I am he, I am he who will sustain you. This is what the Lord says to us. Wonderful knowledge. From the rising of the sun till the setting of the same, your name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun, Father, my heart is not proud. My heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. My eyes are not haughty. Neither do I concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. Lord, I've learned to be content like a weaned child. Like a wind child with his mother. Lord, I put my trust in you. I put my confidence. I put my trust. That's right. Even to the gray hairs. I am he. I am he, says the Lord. I don't know about your situation, but I know the Lord is ministering to us. I know his power is here. I know that we've been waiting on him. And as we ascending his hill, the wonderful things that are too wonderful, the wonderful knowledge that you lay your hand on me, Psalm 136. You lay your hand on me. You lay your hand. You lay your hand on me, Father. 139. You hear me behind and before. And you lay your hand upon me. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. Totally, completely, totally, completely. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you've known it. Lord, as well, same way you've talked, to, talk and talked about the sing, that the moment the singers remove G from the sing, they begin to sin. Father, our worship teams, in various congregations are the points when the where the enemy is always attacking always attacking bringing fornications and adulteries bringing slander bringing fear bringing unfair competition lord i pray today not from a haughty eye not from a proud heart but Lord, from a content, content, content position. My life is a funnel in the name of Jesus. I receive every blessing that you have programmed concerning me today. I receive it, Lord. The, my life is a funnel. I receive every blessing, every blessing. Yes, the one that comes from persisting in you, the one that comes from wrestling, the one that comes from remaining, the one that comes from abiding in your word and your words abiding in us, Lord. I remain in that place of understanding that you answer prayer and I stay in the place of receiving from the Lord. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Jesus, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Listen, the moment you're lifting up your hands, you become a funnel for the Lord. I want you to lift up your hands and see what you begin. Look at this. When you lift up your hands, your life is a funnel. You begin to receive blessings of the Lord. The moment you learn to lift up your hands and turn your life into a funnel, the moment you learn to lift up your hands and turn your life into a funnel is a time of answers to prayer. Begin to manifest. Money is an answer to everything. We call in answers to prayer upon our lives, upon our families, upon our situations. In the name of Jesus, as the Lord has allowed us to come into this time, we receive answers. Turn me into a funnel, my father. I receive every blessing from you. Hallelujah. I receive every blessing that comes from abiding in the Lord. And my words abiding in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray over journey masses over you as you go to Migori, my brother Juma. May the Lord give you journey masses together with everybody you are traveling with. I cover that vehicle with the blood of Jesus. I cover the driver with the blood of Jesus. I cover everybody in this journey. Even that place where you are going in Migori, we send the word of God ahead of you. We decree your life is a funnel. In the mighty name of Jesus, brother Ken, may the Lord go ahead of you. Turn my life into a funnel. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hey, this is so sweet. It doesn't feel like ending, but I got to end because the goodness of the Lord encompasses the righteous as a shield. The favor of the Lord be upon you. I will now pray with you that want to receive salvation. Book of Romans chapter 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart man believes unto righteousness and with your tongue, with your heart, you know, it says, with your mouth. Hallelujah. So if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is a promise that is sure. So receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord give you that answer to prayer. Receive it in Jesus' name. I pray for you now as you conclude. Father, I thank you that you will help us to be watchful and mindful today. That we will be able to wait on you and that Lord our life will be a funnel. Hallelujah. I receive the blessings from the Lord. I turn my life into a funnel. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive from you, Lord. I receive. My life is a funnel in the name of Jesus. I receive, I receive from you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. And we all said, Amen. Amen. God bless you so much, beloved of the Lord. What a joy. Don't forget what the Lord has spoken to us. Out of Isaiah 46, verse 3, I am he, I am he, even to your old age. I am the one who will sustain you, says the Lord. I also give glory to God for giving us this chance and opportunity as we stand with Kahuro, uh, the ministry there in Moranga. I thank God because I'm trusting him and he is going to do it. <laughs> My life is a funnel. <laughs> I thank God. My life is a funnel. I think God is giving me a song. I'll sing it with God. I will not be a sinner. I will be a singer. So the Lord bless you. God see you, Sister Anna. The Lord favor you and shine his light upon you. Amen. God bless you, Celestine. God bless you, Pauline, Ninjada. The Lord realign our times. In Jesus' name, Shalom.